Racing takes place out at Telfontaine on Saturday. We've got uh, a nine race program to look forward to. We are racing on the Stansar track and we've got one feature on the day, the Betway Sycamore Sprint, a grade uh, three contest. And uh, that will uh, be the headliner, which will be race number seven at uh, 25 past three. Joining me on the line is Alistair Cohen. And um, Alistair, how are you doing? How's everything going your side? And um, yeah, looking forward to the card on Saturday. Yeah, thanks for Hill. Nice little double header. Um, Turfentine and Hollywood bets Kenilworth. Uh, obviously, headlined, as you mentioned, by the Betway Sycamore Sprint. Pound for pound, you'll probably say race four. The Pinnacle Stakes is, is uh, well worth the entrance fee to those that will be going to Turfentine on Saturday. So uh, so there's a lot to look forward to as we build up to the final leg of the Triple Crown of Volkerbos Drift Triple TR. Obviously, the word is out that there will be no winner of the uh, of either series this season with uh, two separate winners of the Triple Crown and uh, give me another stepping the final leg of the Volker Bostrup Triple TR. It's a likely run in the Her Serene Harness Princess Charlene Empress Club Stakes. But with all that, I think that meeting at the first Saturday of, uh, of April is going to be a good one. It's a World Pool meeting as well. But um, yeah, looking at this meeting on Saturday, I've seen a lot worse. Um, there are a lot of interesting horses running. Like I said, that fourth race, a lot of horses prepping for races to come. So you probably need to put your thinking caps on in quite a few of them. But uh, all in all, let's hope that things go according to plan. Well, race number one, 1160 meters, the distance 1150 is the off time maiden plate and um, it is Let's Play Poker. Three old son of Gimme the Green Light that tops the boards and he's at very restrictive odds at um, 25 to 100. It is then um, 8 to 1 about uh, Master Floki, 10 to 1 about his lordship, 14 to 1 and better bar those. Returning off a 163 day rest. But um, the bookmakers, they've got this horse priced up deep in the red and he produced a very good run on debut behind uh, Champimpi. He's the horse to beat undoubtedly here, Rahil, the son of Gimme the Green Light. There was a strong word out about him on debut, and I think Green has probably got the better of him and the experience that Champimpi brought. Um, the form, although you could probably take it with a pinch of salt, the form is a bit better than what it looks in the pure direct form of 1 slash 13, because Storm Brasco was nine lengths behind Champimpi, therefore seven lengths behind uh, Let's Play Poker. Marquez has come out of one secret court. Um, Walled Garden was the direct winner, officer in command. Um, so quite a few horses have come out. Lieutenant Alexander, although taking months to win, has won from that form. And uh, he must have been, what, 12 lengths in arrears to let's play poker. Um, fitness has to be taken on trust, obviously, um, being off for uh, about 160 days. But the Aziz can get them ready after a break. Um, I think that he'll win. I think he's the right one to start your day with. A couple of first-timers make some appeal, although there's no interest in the market. There are five. His lordship, the son of Water Winter, out of a sprinting mare, a, a well-performed Clifton stud family. I don't know if he can win. It wouldn't be the Diane staying away to get them ripe and ready first time out. And number eight, number eight Cent Master, another first-timer that makes a degree of appeal. But I think they'll need to be very good and very ready to beat number six. Let's play poker. All in with number six in race number one race number two the start of the five pot 1160 meters the distance a maiden plate for fillies and mares 25 past 12 is the off time and uh, your favorite here is number one quick trip at six to ten three to one about to bilingual it is 33 to 10 gold agent 14 to one and better ball those now quick trip last time out uh, i was gutted on the day i thought that uh, she'd win and uh, she was a winner everywhere but the line, and she got caught uh, late on in the day. Cabello Matanyane aboard uh, once again, 11.60. And uh, in this type of contest, uh, I, I think I'd be extremely gutted if she were to get beat. And Crawford on the back of two winners at Turfentine on Thursday as well, so that's going to build some confidence with his daughter of Trippy. As you say, had the race by the scruff of the neck the whole way until the final few strides when she, C. Shanti, came from the clouds to run her down. So, quick trip deserves her place at the top of the boards. I think she'll take all the beating. The only horse that I'm keeping this race open ended for is number three, Gold Agent. Not ideally drawn with an inside draw, but only seven runners, so if you consider that, that would be drawn in the middle and in a field of 16, you wouldn't be crying. Um, 
And number three, gold age and dropping back to a sprint is interesting enough. I still suspect that Quick Trip will have her number, but ignore the last run over 14.50. It was worth the experiment, but it's not worth doing that experiment again. She clearly didn't stay. She ran out of puff over the closing stages. The mother was an out-and-out sprinter, Uchi agent. And despite all this, out of the form line, Super Skits a winner on Thursday at Turfentine. And Faton Fluffy, who finished behind gold agent, was a winner at Hollywood Bets Global on Wednesday. So the form's taken a bit of an upward curve. So it's just worth keeping it open-ended for number three, gold agent. I expect them to run one, two, probably in the order of one from three, but I'm um, hoping to double up in the bar pot, which is my suggested bet. That's race number two, just one and three in uh, the second race, the start of the bar pot. Uh, moving along to race number three, over 1,600 metres, and this is a graduation plate, the start of the PA. Five past uh, one is the off time. And your favourite is Presley at three to one. Scarlet Pimpernel is at 33 to 10. MK's Dream, 33 to 10. Four to one, Royal Edition, seven to one, and better bar. Those scratch number nine, Weather Wizard. Now, uh, having a look at uh, this contest, number three, Presley, last time out, um, beaten four lengths behind the Supreme Dance, and he's a horse that um, can clearly uh, bounce back. And then you've got MK's, Green, MK's Dream, who ran a nice race last time out, back in third. He's got 57 kgs on the back, and um, the distance will no doubt suit him once again. And then Scarlet Pimpernel returning off arrest and Galden. And you haven't mentioned it. Uh, number six, Max the Magician. I can't believe the price is seven to one. About the son of Water Winter. Third run after a lengthy layoff. Needed the first run back. Had blinkers on, obviously, just to bring him back and sharpen him up and, and let him feel his run and get the fitness under the belt. Second run was a lot better. Now, third run after a rest, he's one from one over this distance. I think that this is the trip that he's looking for. The family don't necessarily get 1,600 metres. He is from a sprinting family, but he clearly acquitted himself nicely when, when getting out the maidens in April. Um, I think the source is ripe and ready. He's got a nice, comfortable draw of two in a small field, and um, I make him the undoubted value of the race at a price of 7 to 1. I think that's a very tasty price indeed. I've backed him up with number one, Scarlet Pimpernel, who I think has overachieved a little bit. I remember chatting to Adam Mazzi after he won his uh, maiden start, and he went in his favourite, funny enough, in a middle stakes, that perfect witness one. And Adam said, I can't believe the sorts of rates at mid-90s. Um, the interview's all there for everyone to see. But now he's been gilded, comes out of draw one, um, there's, there's enough to give him a vote of confidence because I think he's maintained his form. He's a try, he's a salt of the earth type of horse. He'll give you his best. And those attributes always make him some sort of inclusion. Muzi only takes it out for the Asmin. And I think number one, Scarlet Pimpernel, is certainly worth a second glance. Um, and if you don't like Max the Magician, if you do like Presley or MK's dreams, then Scarlet Pimpernel is just a natural backup to have. You wouldn't want to go to war or you wouldn't want to go into a leg of the place accumulator or bar pot without a horse like Scarlet Pimpernel. Presley, although I respect his win over Marauding Horde, stands up. But remember, Marauding Horde then and the Marauding Horde now are two totally different horses. Um, and number seven, MK's dreams are better last run to Warhawk Bomber. Warhawk Bomber made them look pretty ordinary last time. There was a lot, an alarming drift about MK's dreams as well. So let's see if he can back up that run with the same type of performance. But I think number six makes some magician is the value in the race. And number one, Scarlet Pimpernel, just because of uh, of his attributes of being a real trier, are the two horses for me in the Barbas and the PA. Well, you could be onto something there with number six, Max the Magician, to run eight lengths to main defender in... Uh as a juvenile, and uh, we know what main defender has gone on to achieve. That is certainly a cracking run and conceding two kgs as well. So Max the Magician could just be the horse that you want to uh, play around in race number three at 7-1. to one. Race number four, a pinnacle stakes over 1,400 meters. This will be the start of uh, the pick six. Off time, 13-40. And uh, Humdinger tops the boards here at 22-10. to 4-1 to one about quantum theory. 4-1, to one, give me a shot. Texas Red is at 11 to 2. It's in 10 to 1. And better ball. Those scratch number 8. Unzen. Now, this race, uh, obviously, horses that uh, are returning off uh, rest. You've got the likes of Future Pearl, who will probably be set for another tilt at, uh, at the Gold Cup come uh, the end of KZN uh, champion season. You've got uh, the likes of uh, Forever Mind, who on his day is certainly very capable, but um, he's been a bit out of form of late. So this was Humdinger, ran a cracker last time out and over 1,600 meters a distance that she hasn't particularly uh, been a best over. I thought it was a, a good run and now going over a distance that uh, suits her quite well. She's fit, She's uh, she should be ready to rock and roll, but then this was Quantum Theory will keep you interested because 
I thought he hit the line quite hard last time out and third in the race was the main defender who came out to win uh, the horse chestnut. I find this race very, very awkward, Rahil, and you shouldn't because it's a pinnacle of stakes. We've got good class quality feature race winners. We've got group winners in the form of I, the Prophet, Bingwa, Future Pearl, um, Hundinger, you know, very, very good horses. Give me a shot, another one. I've narrowed it down to three in the bar pot, um, but in the pick six, the opening leg of the pick six, I think you'll need a few more. My top choice is number 10, give me a shot. Although it was Workman Lap when winning a progress that she ought to have won last time simply in the black and white and on the card. Um, it was a nice comeback from Cape Town. I don't think it's all that easy a month away to come back from Cape Town and be at your best. So, although I don't think she was at her best, she still did more than enough. Her runs in Cape Town were fair. She ran against October Morn, who's just a better sprinter than Give Me A Shot. She ran against Princess Keller, who's just a better horse than Give Me A Shot. Um, and... Remember, she won the Yippie Tombi as a three-year-old off the same type of weight, and I'd like to believe, although she's taking on quite a few males here, that with 52 kilos, that the win in the Yippie, Yippie Tombi is enough substance to make a good case for number 10. Give me a shot. But the backup comes from number five, Humdinger, definitely good run last time when she was just outrun from Silver Hills, who came from downtown to run down number five, Humdinger. I think you're right. Although she can perform over 1,600 metres, this is probably her sweet spot. Three of her seven career wins have come over this trip. She's capable of turning over a field of this nature. What worries me a little bit about number five Humdinger, if I had a reservation, is how the race is going to work out because there's a lot of pace here. Humdinger, Forever Man, they can go forward. Um, there's another one down the page, Fire and Flames with a lot of weight. I think we'll also search for a handy spot and I hope that they don't ruin each other's chances. So if Humdinger from a, a kind draw can get whatever the right position is, she'll be very dangerous. Her best style of running is obviously from the front and then I like number two Bingwa although the smacks of a prep run for, for something in the future might be a drill hall type of contender because he ran two lengths behind Triple Fortune 12 months ago in the Independence and Saturday drill hall stakes at the start of champion season um, I think that this horse is also good enough to give it a shake he's a two time Allied Steel Road on a, on a mission mile winner so that shows his quality from the deep draw he'll drop in anyway um, there's, there's enough going for number two Bingwa here um, and I think that he might be one of the better middle distance horses in Joburg, especially at this level, without being a grade one horse. He's a two time grade two winner as well. So, um, two Bingo, a horse that I have a lot of time for in this race. So, two, five, and ten are my bar pot numbers. In the pick six, you'll definitely want to include numbers one, four, and Captain Pig better on the inside track, I think. So, I'd probably sidestep her this time. Maybe Texas Red also gets a vote of confidence in the pick six. But, uh, an interesting race. I mentioned for Future Pearl. Unbelievable horse. Um, I'm sure that he'll take the route to the staying triple crown, the unofficial staying triple crown that he won last season so impressively in the gold bowl, gold vase, and gold cup. He was brilliant. He was head and shoulders above the others. And his return with blinkers on, you can see what Sean Terry's trying to do. Blow off the cobwebs, get the run under the belt, and go forward from here. Yeah, this horse, a Bingwa, 14 to 1 in the market. It could be a brilliant find from Alistair if Bingwa can uh, run into uh, those top, uh, top two positions for the bar pot. Moving along to race number five, 1,400 metres the distance, the start of Jackpot 1. Feliz and Mears, 94 handicap at uh, quarter past two. The market has got Vix Princess at the top, 18 to 10, 33 to 10, Jess B. Lecker. It is 6 to 1 about Cape Lights, 8 to 1 about Batula, Magical Flight, and then it's 10 to 1 and better bar those. Now, Vix Princess ran third last time out behind Celtic Rumor. She's in good form, holding her form well, and then... Uh, Jess B. Lecker, down from her campaign in, uh, back from her campaign in the Western Cape, when running fourth in uh, the Gold Rush behind Rapid Ash, which I thought was um, a cracking performance. And uh, this Philly, what's your thoughts uh, on her? How's she doing back at home? She's doing very nicely, Rick. You know, the, the overriding feel, though, about the horses that are coming back from uh, from Cape Town, especially from Candace's yard, is that they're probably just a run away from, from being at their best. Um, this is no cup final for number three, just be lacking, but she's doing very well. I'd like to believe, although Taylor the Comet was desperately, desperately, desperately unlucky in the in the gold rush, I think Taylor the Comet would absolutely toy with this field. So that line of form and that logic's got to make number three just be lack of a contender um, she is also placed on the inside track in the uh, Betway Joburg Spring Challenge for Phillies and Mayors finishing third to Featherborough although for very light weight so those are the capabilities that she's got um, out of that form um, Bavarian Beauty ran fourth in the Grade 1 Volker Busdruff South African Phillies Classic um, and then down the page King of the Gauls ran, ran third when trying different tactics so it's not a form line that, that sparks up but I like to believe that number three just be lack will 
be in and around probably 80% right, which should be good enough to at least give it a shake. Um, one Cape Lights and four Vix Princess, three horses that I've got in into the bar pot with number three, just be like a Vix Princess, I think deserves their place at the top of the board. She is my top choice. Um, very, very consistent filly since she got to uh, to Johannesburg. She's done very little wrong. She was run down by a very smart filly in the form of Celtic Rumors last time at the Vile. Celtic Rumors came from last. Vix Princess was given absolutely every chance. She had no answer to the winner. The second place horse was Good Queen Best, who was tested at feature race level. Didn't run too badly, but didn't uh, rip up any trees in the process. Fourth place horse was the frustrating Lady Fallon. So that form probably deserves a chance to work out completely. But at the moment, it looks like there are better form lines around. And number one, Cape Lutz, just for a pure consistency in it. And, uh, and the way that she tries her best, she also goes into the place. She's not been blessed with a good draw, but Samago Kamala seems to get a tune out of this daughter of ideal world, and, and she'll go close enough. If not winning, she'll be there and thereabouts. So one, three, and four for me in the bar pot. Place accumulator, work around the same numbers, and the pick six, you might need to open up a little bit more. Those are the top three horses in the betting market. Moving along to race number six, the star of Jackpot 2. And uh, this will be run over 1160 meters. It is the graduation plate, 1450, the off time. Elegant Ice, 2 to 1, 28 to 10, ready to charge Mount Pilatus at 11 to 2, 6 to 1 about Zenobi, and then it's 8 to 1 and better bar those. Now, Elegant Ice, uh, last time out, uh, finished second behind Swing Upon a Star. She was all the rage, and uh, we thought that uh, she'd get the job done. And last weekend, you uh, picked uh, Swing Upon a Star, and you thought he'd. Uh, he'd be the right horse in the race, and he won a nice race. Mm, beating a lot stronger than this, or certainly a, a field as capable as this, with no weight on her back. Number seven, Elegant Ice, by default, is going to be one horse that pops up as a likely winner in the sixth race on the card. But I must confess, Three Hill is a short head away from bankering number three, ready to charge. But I, I, I thought better of it than number seven, Elegant Ice. 15 and a half kilos on her back, real speed horse drawn towards the outside and the swing upon a star form um, being faint. But ready to charge is an above average sprinter. To what level, I don't know. He clearly didn't stay the mile in the gold rush last time out. He didn't stay 14.50 in the Joburg Spring Challenge in mid-October. But his runs to future variety and uh, Thunderstruck, although uh, getting a lot of weight from Thunderstruck on Lamar King's plate, day, wasn't beaten out of sight by one of the best sprinters in the country now that I see Vungu Vungu is gone. Um, and then even to future variety of level weights who pushed Thunderstruck so close all the way down to the Y and the Kaya Stables uh, died a mistake. So all that I think stacks up as better pieces of form than what number seven Elegant Ice brings in. But then we've got to discuss the weight turnaround, which is vast. I think only two horses can win this race, so they're three and seven. Um, I'd like to believe that they'll run one, two here. In what order? I'm leaning towards three over seven, but I've got all the time in the world for Elegant Ice. That's just three and seven in race number six and uh, elegant ice with just 50 k 50 and a half cages on the back could certainly get that second career victory under the belt moving along to race number seven which is the betway sycamore sprinter grade three over 1160 meters 25 past three is the off time favorite here is uh, one foul swoop at 22 to 10 mrs browning with uh, 61 cages on the back she's at five to two white pill at nine to two Flower Bomb is at 17 to 2. It's then 10 to 1. And better bar those. Now, um, Alula Star, Mrs. Browning, both horses that have been tested at uh, a fairly high level. And uh, Mrs. Browning, she's in terrific form. She's beat Cold Out Stay in her last two starts. Gavin gets aboard. She's got that one draw, which uh, could just be a slight concern. And then you've got One Fell Swoop, who won a nice race last time out. And she has got zero points for winning that uh, race. And that was in the national currency sprint, and we saw why Zach come through to Frank that form line during the week. Yeah, but Raheel, I must be honest, the only concern here for Mrs. Browning is the inside draw. I think she's better than anyone else in this race, and I think she's got the natural speed to get across and and to potentially show the way, and, and hopefully, uh, with that logic, be uh, one that's hard to beat and go from start to finish. I bank it her in my bar pot, which might be a little bit brave, considering the inside draw and the fact that she goes so much weight away, but I think that she's the best horse in the race. Um, she won the Magnolia on Summer Cup Day, beating Cold Heart Stairs. She doubled the dose against the same filly who subsequently been exported by a length and that was just a warm-up run clearly for a few races to come 
it wouldn't surprise me to think to, to know that Sean Terry is thinking big. By the way, Sean's got a very good record in the second more sprint. He's won it with a lot less, lesser horses than Mrs. Browning. Uh, I'm not going to give too many names, but I remember one, My Funny Valentine. I remember that quite famously. It was a horrible thunderstorm at Turfentown, and My Funny Valentine bounced back. She was a very good two-year-old, and then she completely lost her way and came out and won the second more sprint. But he's won plenty of these second more sprints with Sean, and, and Mrs. Browning fits the bill as probably a, a more natural fit than some of the others that have won. I've got a lot of time for number five, one false whip, but with all due respect, Mrs. Browning's gone from running in, in grade three level on, on Betway Summer Cup Day, and, and one false whip has been running against her own age group. It's a big step up for her. She might be capable of it. There's no doubt that she could be capable of it, Raheel, but I think that this is going to be a, a sufficient test for number five, one false whip, but wherever she runs, she won't be disgraced. She, she could even turn over number two, Mrs. Browning, so I'd go the two in the pick six. Three white four has me absolutely stumped. I don't know what distance she wants, but back to basics, back down to the sprints. In fact, it's her first run in a sprint for number three, White Paw. It might work. Who knows? Um, I'm just finding it tough to, to crack her. And that's probably where the race ends for me. So just two runners here, just uh, number two and number five. But uh, Alistair firmly in the camp of number two, Mrs. Browning for Sean, Terry and Gavin Larina. Moving along to race number eight, which is a penultimate race on the day. It's an MR96 handicap over 1,000 metres. Four o'clock is the off time. And uh, having a look at uh, the market uh, for race number eight, your favourite is Amber Rock at five to two. It is uh, seven to two about Cosmic Star, four to one about Austin Kerr, Rainbow Reward, and then it's eight to one and better ball. Those now, um, Amber Rock had uh, her comeback round last time out when running third behind Star Bomber. And uh, she tired late on, in the, late on in the day after showing all of the all of the pace and uh, 54 kgs on the back Muzieni takes a ride where does she rank in uh, in your selections race, but she's right up there, Raheel. Um, I think the biggest key for this daughter, give me the green lights, is back to a 1,000 metres. Remember her uh, debut in the Proteus Stakes, where she, on the mud, went hard up on the inside and nearly stole it from Lucky Lad, who was obviously a, a, a better known and well-performed two-year-old at the time. She went wrong in the uh, in the Phillies nursery, or rather that was the Colts nursery behind Lucky Lad, plain to see that wasn't her. And then back nine months later, first run in, in, in Cape Town, moved up dangerously, didn't go on with it. And then beating you Google it, so that's a flat piece of form. But first run back in Trobo after a two-month layoff and travelling was good. I think that that run will serve her well. Um, and as mentioned, back to a 1,000 metres has got to be a huge benefit for number eight, Amber Rock. The two Vernus horses also strike a chord, as does number one, Ozenker. Ozenker is a four-time winner. And he, he runs particularly well at Turfontaine. Last time outrun by I Am Giant, who he uh, received quite a bit of weight from, but I Am Giant... Almost right, that form was running second against um, the swing upon a star a week ago. So, number one, Ozan Kerr, the case is pretty plain to see, although an inside draw. And the two Vernus horses, two Cosmic Star and seven Rainbow Reward, I think are two horses that are pretty much on the up. They're consistent, they run their races, they give their best. Rainbow Reward makes a little bit more appeal. I know Gavin Lorena's on number two, Cosmic Star. Well, hopefully, he's there to ride. He obviously got stood down on Thursday, but don't read anything into that because Gavin riding 55. Um, not going to happen too easily, not if it's uh, not if it's not a grade one. So don't read anything into the jockey arrangements. Rainbow Reward probably just needed the last one. Inner middle stakes, not disgraced behind the resurgent time for all good to, to be fair, toyed with the opposition in Joburg. But seven Rainbow Reward, I think, would be better with that run under the belt. So also a player in a wide, wide open race. Yeah, just a one-off horses that uh, Rainbow Reward, one of a number of horses that uh, looks to have a lively chance in race number eight and a race where you possibly uh, want to go uh, a bit wider than uh, you normally would race number nine 1000 meters the trip mr80 handicap 16 35 is the off time favorite uh, in the ninth race is kinchin shah at five to one it's 11 to two covert operator six to one articuno it is seven to one siberian steel brosnan it's an eight to one and a better ball those if we thought race number eight was tricky surely race number nine is uh, is uh, a race where you need to go as wide as possibly even including the field or have you managed to uh, find us uh, an each way play in race nine alistair i would love i have i have but i think in the pick 
six. You need as many horses as you can, Rahil. Um, Kinfin Shah, the support for the son of Water Winter, is alarming. That strikes a lot of chords drawn toward the outside. The son of Water Winter back to a thousand meters third run after a race. Gotta like his chances. I was disappointed with his last run behind Key and the Conqueror, but he's worth another chance back to a thousand meters. So that's for number 10, Kinfin Shah. 13 Stormy Seas. Hasn't won in 282 days. He has got the most annoying running style you've ever seen. But at 16 to 1 under Raymond Danielson, who is a quirky horse, quirky jockey, Raymond, although not winning on Stormy Seas, has at least produced this horse to a, a few places from the times that he's ridden him. And go watch his last run closely. That was a big effort from Stormy Seas. The only thing that worries me about Stormy Seas is that he flatters to deceive. He always strikes as a next time type of horse and next time hasn't come for a while. But his ratings come down a little bit more. Last time he carried a lot more weight on them by virtue of an apprentice allowance one kilo more. But still, that was against probably weaker. But, but therefore, now he's in a slightly stronger race with less weight. I think number 13, Stormy Seas, running in a straight line, will run into the first four and potentially represents the value in the final race on the card. Heaps of others deserve uh, a mention. One COVID operator loves the uh, distance. All five of his wins have come over this trip. Every time they try him over further, he doesn't go the distance. He'll be ridden for luck. That's his way back from a rest. I think that he'll run well fresh, run well enough, as I know that he has his niggles. Um, there was another one, full Siberian and still got to be better than that last run suggests. Arthur Kuna, I don't know what to make of her. She won a decidedly moderate maiden, and she hasn't ripped up any tree since. But there were sounds of laugh last time. Seven Brosnan got to go into the play. In the ether, who I did not like one iota last time, but seems to be held by Palace Revolt, uh, rather by Stormy Seas out of the Palace Revolt run. So uh, that enhances the uh, the idea of number 13, Stormy Seas, running a good race. So 10 and 13 are two horses that are going to work around, but in the pick six, You'll need nearly half the field. Yeah, Stormy Seas could be some very nice value in the final race on the day at 16 to 1 in the market. And uh, if uh, this happens to come through to um, win, well, then uh, we've all got Alistair Cohen to thank, uh, thank for that because this would have been a brilliant find in the last race on the day. We're moving along to the suggested bet now, and Alistair will take us through his suggested bet, which is the bar pot. And the bar pot commences with a running of race number two at 25 past 12 where Quick Trip is the favourite. So, Alistair, take it away. And that's key. That time, the first race is early at 2.15 on Saturday, so don't miss the boats and the exotics. Don't rest on your laurels. Get things going. So, uh, Barpot, race two, one and three, Quick Trip and Gold Age is in the first leg. By one and six, Scarlet Pimpernel and Max the Magician. By two, Bingwa, five, Humdinger and ten, Gimme a Shot. Race five, which is leg four of the Barpot, one, Cape Lights, three, Just Be Lacquer and four, Vix Princess. By three and seven, Ready to Charge and Elegant Ice. And then the final leg up, Bank at number two, Mrs. Browning. That is Alistair Cohen's bar pot. Alistair, thanks very much for your time. You found a couple of nice value uh, selections on the day. And uh, if they do arrive, well, we uh, will certainly be thanking you. And um, you'll be smiling. Now they've got to arrive. That's going to be the challenge. Um, yeah, hopefully one of them uh, comes to the fore. I think we'll just need one of those each-way plays to, to strike, hopefully to win, and then it will be a successful Saturday. But it's a lot easier said than done, as we all know. Yeah, most definitely. Racing out at Turf Team begins at 11.50. It is an early start to the race meeting. And all the best with du the doubleheader on Saturday.